you're going to learn about the foreground, middle ground, and background. And the tools and supplies you will need are drawing paper, crayons or oil pastels, and a pencil. And that's it. Very simple, and I know you've got this at home. So I've been trying to keep my projects so that it can work with what you, whatever you have probably at home. So here we go. First of all, oh, I should show you. So I have my crayons and these are all used and used crayons work just fine. So uh, there's no reason to have new pointy tips on them because I don't need that. This is a pencil, not very sharp, but it'll work. And oil pastels. Okay, so you don't have, if you don't have oil pastels, um, you can, you don't need to use them. In fact, we'll do this with crayons and then you can try it with oil pastels if you have them. And the paper, I'm just using, I have a roll of white paper, but you can use your drawing paper. Um, and then you can later on play with, you know, doing this work on colored construction paper. And you probably have that too. See how you can color on here and it looks pretty cool. So these are examples. We're gonna start with white, but first we gotta go over what we're working on. So you're gonna work on foreground, middle ground, and background. So here we have some words, foreground. Well, we know that's not right. We got a number here. So that's not gonna work very well. This is foreground with that number written out. And that is, I'm gonna just mark these off. No, foreground, no, we're not working with four different grounds. We might be, but that's not what we're talking about. Foreground, no, it's not for the ground, so that doesn't work. It is foreground, and that is how it's spelled. And think of this correct spelling because of the word, let's see, before. So it's before, it's the earliest thing you see. So it's right here and then right closest to you and then the other grounds come after. So remember how to spell it, like before, it's four ground. So here we are, we're gonna work with foreground, middle ground and background. Now here's a good question for you. Why is, you know, our English language is pretty crazy, but we can have foreground is one word, background is one word, but if you put middle ground, middle and ground together, that's not a word. So <laughs> I think you wouldn't be so wrong if you put them together, but if you look it up, it is not correct to put those two together. Crazy, isn't it? Okay, so we will move on. We're gonna get started. We are gonna look at some um, examples that uh, of an artist that I really like. And these are with oil pastels um, on black paper. This is abstract, but we're looking here at foreground. And we can kind of see more of a middle area here. And as you go back, you know, I don't know if we're seeing, you know, depths of the forest or mountains or whatever, but it's pushed back. So we see a little sunlight back in here. These trees are closer. Um, this is a very nice example. Here's, here's another one. And this one you can see, she's used, this is cool tones, right? And um, she's got a little sunlight patch that has come through. You can see other trees back in the back. So that's background. This is a middle ground. And it makes sense. So you've got foreground, remember before, it's in front, middle, and and background. Very simple, this is very simple. It's just done with some color, very few colors. Um, it's beautiful. Now here's another one, a little brighter. This is very clearly, background is way back there. That's the sky and this back, you know, uh, I don't know if, it's, if we're up against a hill, if we've got just a big, thick um, group of trees. And then we've got uh, a nice middle ground here where she has patches of sunlight coming through and she's highlighted this area. Maybe the leaves have all come down and they've, they've left uh, a red area. So this is a foreground. So you can see very clearly the stages here. We're gonna kind of follow this, this idea and we're going to draw 
We can, we can lay it out with our pencil. You certainly don't have to. Um, but we're gonna put very close to us is going to be a tree here, okay? And I'm not gonna get a, a lot of details in this tree because we'll cover a lot of it with crayons. So this tree is big. It may cover up a whole section here because it's so big and in front and close, right? So I'll put a couple more branches. All right, here's this tree, big in front, right? Kind of want to have a tire swing. Um, but, but stepping back now, maybe this is equally big, but it's back here. So it's stepped back. So I'm just making branches. Now I'm going kind of fast, but what I'm trying to do is get you to be inspired to do this on your own. And you can certainly stop this video and catch up to me. And see, every time I draw a branch, and this isn't how you have to draw it, but I draw a branch and then I make a Y. And then I come off of it, maybe draw another branch, and I make a Y. It's a very simple way of drawing a tree. It just, uh, and actually it's, it, it is kind of realistic. Um, trees do grow like that. And they usually grow up because they're growing toward the sunlight. So we got one, we got one in the foreground. This one's kind of maybe still foreground. It depends on what we develop back here. One thing we can do is go in the back and we can decide, okay, do I want, do I want like um, a rolling hill back here? Maybe I want another rolling hill behind it. Here's that. Okay, maybe there's another one tucked here. Maybe there's a more flatter area. Okay, so, and then maybe this is sky. We'll color it in and you'll see the difference. Now, what if we want like a little, we want a pond. Now, if we draw, if we draw a pond that looks like this, but it's far away, it's gonna really seem like it's straight up and down because we're looking over the top of it. So when you draw a, something like a pond far away, it's gonna be shaped more like this because you're not looking, you're not looking from overhead, you're looking from this direction. Does that make sense? So you want to squish your pond, if you're gonna put one, and make it, you know, it's not gonna be perfectly shaped, so you're gonna add some strange shape to it. So we're gonna do that back here because we're not looking overhead. You can see a pond. Or uh, maybe it's maybe it's actually a lake because it's way back there. Okay, um, so how do we get more of the middle ground? We're gonna draw smaller trees. So they may actually be the same size if you were standing right next to them as these trees, but they're further back. Okay, so I'm gonna do my Y. I'm gonna draw a Y here on this branch. I'm gonna draw a Y here. Now, like I said, we do not have to get really detailed on these because we are going to color over a lot of this. Okay, so we'll put, we don't want them all in a row. We want one back here that's pretty tiny because we're getting, getting further back, right? And I'm not even gonna make the branches very thick. Um, what if, what if there's a, what if there's like a stump here? You could draw a stump, right? And it's not ever going to be like flat on the bottom because the roots kind of grow weird. And then we would draw, you know, a texture there. Okay, so maybe, what if we want a whole bunch of bushes around this pondy lake? But they're way back there, right? There they are, really tiny. Okay. So what if, um, maybe we should have a few more trees. So I'm just gonna kind of, these almost look like dandelion puffs back there, don't they? But they're not. We'll just draw little trees here and there. We'll draw, we'll draw way back here. You know what? We don't have any like pine trees. We could easily draw pine trees back here. And these are, these are just a small group and probably not that big a trunk. And maybe they, these would be giant pine trees, I think, because they're way back there. All right. Um, I think we're off to a good start here. Maybe, yeah, 
let's see, anything else? Maybe another tree right here, just about that same size. Because we want it to be interesting, right? We don't want just a few here and there. And then I'm gonna show you how I like to do my leaves, but you can do your leaves any way you want. All right, so what we're gonna do first is why don't we go back to the back and then we'll work our way forward. And we're gonna start with, I'm going to say it's a beautiful um, blue sky. Now I'm gonna turn this this way just to get this coloring because it's kind of a long way off. And I'm just gonna color this in. Now if you want a cloud, you should, you should just add it. Say we have it really light clouds today. But otherwise it's a beautiful blue sky. So we're gonna go around the clouds because we're gonna use the white of your paper. Now, if you're doing this on dark paper, you're gonna to want to color the clouds with white on there. So there we go with the sky. Now this is a really, really blue sky. You know, I don't do much with crayons. And I, once I get them in my hands, I just love them. And the reason why we're not doing this with markers is because we need to be able to do some shading and to change our values. Now, if you remember, values are lights and darks. So it's like how dark a color is um, and then how going up to how dark it can be. So these clouds look kind of funny, but like a little eyebrows or little peaky eyes. Okay, so we've got a sky in there, right? Now, the thing about foreground, middle ground, and background is that up close, things are gonna be very uh, clear, right? They're gonna be very defined. So actually, I'm jumping around. I'm just gonna jump around and we'll do these trees right now so I can get that, that idea across. So I'm just using brown here. I'm just kind of tracing over some of what I've done before. And then I'll show you how to do the bark. Now you could just color this tree in completely, just solid, or you could try to make it more like bark. So this is what, I got really carried away with these branches, didn't I? Let's split some of these up. Okay, so let's get some bark. Now bark is going to be vertical like this. Although there are some trees like the birch tree where it peels off and, and strips, but the strips come off around it in sections. So this is a little different. This is, I don't know what kind of tree this is gonna be. Maybe it's a big old cottonwood. Okay, so I'm just kind of, and branches don't have the tough bark like that on the new parts. So they're a little smoother. So we won't worry about that too much. But now I'm gonna go back in here and kind of press harder in some areas. Like this. So you get nice texture. Does that look like bark to you? I think it's starting to look like that. Okay, now this is much closer. So I can be quite defined. And you know what? I should look for some dark, dark color. And I guess a black would be nice, but I, you know what? I don't have to have a black. What is this color? This is Pacific Blue. Isn't that pretty? I'm just gonna run that in there just to add variety. Remember, you don't have to, as an artist, you certainly don't have to go by exactly what you're seeing outside or around you. You can add your own flair. Now, if somebody wants you to draw a picture exactly of what it is, well, that's different, okay? But, okay, that's pretty. Now, let's do that again over here. And this one's gonna be a little softer because one thing is that as you go further back, so it's more defined, things are sharper, colors are bolder, as you get further back, it's going to gray out a little bit. Now, the reason that it gets, it's brighter here, and, and it's less out there is not just because we can't see quite clearly that far, but it's because between here and way out there are a lot of particles in the air that would uh, prevent you from, from seeing exactly what you see here. So um, 
there are actually a lot of factors, but this is part of, and the way that the light hits it out there, you know, some things could be very bright if there's sunshine on it and you have a cloud over where you are. So here we go, I'm getting all my Y's drawn. Looks like a spooky old tree. My daughter had a book called Spooky Old Tree, one of her favorites. And um, that's kind of what we got going on here until we get the leaves. Now we could, we could draw it like it's autumn and have the leaves hanging down or falling down, but um, I think we'll make it really pretty. Like maybe summertime. Okay, I pressed a little hard, but this is getting further back. So we're not as detailed. We don't see the bark like we did. And this one, we definitely don't. We're just seeing some brown out here. These guys, these little, this is kind of a dull crayon. These are my little dandelion puff puffs out here. Okay, and those pine trees, we'll get to those. Okay, so we've defined this area. Now, one thing we might want to do at this point is our, um, what is this color? Blue, blue. Okay, as you get out to your mountains or rolling hills, they're gonna be more gray toned, but we can add green to it. It's just that they're further away, right? We want them to be back, back. There's this line, we don't wanna lose our line. We don't want it to quite blend into the sky. So we'll pull this out. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of green to that. Like, I'm going to take green. This is just green. And just lightly go over that to give it a little bit of the green feel. But it's grayed. It's grayed back there. And then I'm gonna take and put a little of this green, this basic green, and go here. Now, of course, you're gonna color this neater because I think you'll spend a little more time on it. I'm just trying to get you started. Now, if you did want a little bit of sunlight hitting way out here, you can add a bright color just going through. And maybe the clouds, there are more clouds over where we are. And so we get a little sun patch here. Maybe there's a sun patch here. Maybe there's a sun patch here. And add just a little bit out there, okay? So let's um, let's define let's define these little pine trees. I'm just getting some color there now. Those will blend in practically when we get our um, grass and stuff in there. I'm gonna add this color, that Pacific blue again, to parts of this because parts of our pond might be sunny or shiny. So we won't color the whole thing. Okay, so then we have some little bitty trees or bushes back here. There they are. Okay, so we're at the place where we should, oh, look what I forgot, my stump. I bet you're all at home saying, ah, oh, she's not even paying attention. I'm not gonna do her stump right now. Here we go, I got it. And I really should find a nice yellow because maybe this was just cut. Um, a yellow, a brown yellow. I wonder if I can find anything. I have a huge, look at all my crayons. I have so many to choose from and try and not the one I want. Where is the one I want? That's how it goes for me. Okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna put this like it was just cut and it blends in with the other stuff. All right, and maybe this tree has a little bit of yellow in its bark. That kind of brightens that up, doesn't it? Maybe sun's hitting a little bit of that. All right, we can even do that on this one. Look at the pretty colors now coming through. Okay, so we've got foreground, we've got background, we've got some middle ground, but let's start adding some grass. Now I'm gonna add grass that goes around the base of my tree like that. But then I'm going to also color short squiggles to give me the grass feel, right? I don't want to, I don't want to color sideways because if I color sideways, what's going to happen? That won't look like grass, will it? Grass doesn't grow sideways, grass goes up and down. And so we want to give that feeling of grass growing up and down. Up, 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 
You can do just one blade at a time, or you can move just up and down, squiggle up and down. Look how nice that's starting to look. You know, it's funny, it's kind of like we're putting together a puzzle. You gotta find the key parts to it, right? And now we're filling in all around here. Now, we can keep, we'll keep doing that, but I also wanna show you some cool things. Now, grass isn't one color, is it? So we're gonna go in here, we've got Granny Smith apple. Let's see what happens here. What, is that the same color? They don't look the same. Yeah, it's just a little bit off. A little, a little bit more blue to it. That one doesn't show much, but it's pretty. Let's give a little bit. Okay, so then, what if we get some bright green? That might not show either. Oh, that's pretty. That's pretty, I like that. See that pretty? So grass, of course, isn't just one color either. And let's get, I need a dark green. Where's the, this is green. That's the one. I'm just gonna put some blades around. See how pretty that is? Huh. I'm liking this coloring. Okay, so let's keep going. We're gonna get, we're gonna go back to what we started with. I put grass over here. Now, whew, my hand's getting tired. How about yours? Do you need to take a moment to do a little stretch? Stretch your hands back, stretch your hands back. This one's not doing anything, but you might as well do the, might as well have the same things. Move your fingers, maybe flex them back and forth. Maybe take, oh, I bumped the camera, sorry. Maybe have a cup of coffee. No, you don't wanna have a cup of coffee. Maybe you need a sip of milk or something, juice. All right, back to it. Here we go. Sorry about the camera bump, that's not good. Okay, so you're probably thinking, well now I'm coloring up into the tree, but am I? No, because the tree's in front of all this. We know that, we put it there. Okay, so here we go. Getting a lot of green grass in here, it's looking good. I'm just gonna keep with this color, I think till we get it all colored. Now, I, you can get really sloppy if you just, you know, get tired of this, but we don't want to. We want to keep a nice, neat, composed piece. We'll just keep on going, squiggle, squiggle. We'll get close to our branches because you don't have to get very close because we're gonna add leaves and those leaves are gonna be really easy I'll show you how look at this now we're starting to feel that now don't press quite as hard we're getting further back we're not gonna have in fact now you don't have to show the difference of both blades of grass right because we can't see that out there we're just seeing color that's nice because now your hand can take a break. So now you can just color green. We're doing a lot of green, but if it if it if it's the prairie or something out in Montana before you're getting to the mountains or whatever, you might have a lot of um, gold or brown in there um, all year round. There's sometimes there's lavender colors of different grasses. So. Look at we, oh, we're making progress here. Okay, got green, woo! But now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do this, you know, just around here. Fill in some of those places. And I'm gonna take this dark green. There, I want some grass growing right around the base of this. And here too, we got grass that kind of likes to grow right up close. Now, I don't know that anybody's out here mowing but it does like to grow taller right next to the tree, okay? So that's all the closer detail we're gonna do. Now, it's time for the fun part. Well, you know what, now that I look at it, I'm gonna add just a little bit more here. 
I picked up a different green, but that's fine. Just to fill that in, because we don't really want white just being there. Okay. All right, so might need to do the finger stretch, finger stretch. Do your daily exercise. What is it? Exercise, 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 exercise. Okay. All right, now we're gonna add, yeah, I think I'm gonna go with some blue. Now you'll wonder about this. But I'm gonna do squiggles. And I'm gonna do squiggles kind of on the lower parts of each branch and I'm gonna do it in blue. Now you're saying, what is that crazy lady doing? Well, blue is a beautiful shadow color. And the lower part of the leaves are not going to get much light, as, or as much light as the upper leaves will, okay? Ooh, we might even lose this tree back here. Okay, so I'm gonna put this, we can come back in with this, but these leaves back here are gonna have a little blue, little blue. It'll all come together in just a minute. It'll make a lot more sense. I'm gonna put some blue back here on these trees in the back, maybe around these bushes. I love blue as a, I'm gonna put a little bit up here, as a shadow color. That's always my go-to color for shadows. So we're getting some back in there. Okay, now, this is our big guy, so he's probably, Yes, I'm calling it a heat. Maybe it's a sheet tree. So we're gonna add this shadowing and it's squigglies. You see that? I'm grouping my leaves together. I'm gonna pretend their branch is coming right out toward me. And I'm grouping my leaves together just to make them squiggly. And this will make sense, of course. Like I said, I'm even gonna add some blue in the grass right here. Pretty blue. Okay, let's get some, let's go with the, the green. That's the darker color. Squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. Okay, now I'm gonna start kind of making an outline to my tree. And I'm gonna go around where it just was. Now these have branches coming toward us too, so we'll, we'll just squiggle over that. Squiggle, squiggle. We're filling this tree up. Got the leaves coming. Leaves out here. We don't want spooky old trees right now. We want colorful trees, right? Colorful. Lots of leaves, lots of leaves. You can go crazy with this because like I said, they're squiggles. Squiggles are fun, easy, but you still come out doing a really cool thing. Okay, so we've got squiggles here. Squiggles, squiggles, squiggles back here. Okay, that's good. Now, let's let's add more. Kind of this color, this one is called green yellow and it's a blender so it's kind of blending in while adding color so look at these leaves we're getting and I'm just really squiggling squiggling all over it's like sounds like a squiggle like a like you need to dance or something all right okay so good that's good right now this is very important remember that blue I was talking about now, I think I'm gonna take this Pacific Blue because it's a little darker. And I'm gonna go, and I'm going to pretend that the sun is actually straight overhead, which where we live doesn't happen very often. So what we have is uh, we'll be pretending that we have noon and that's when the sun is directly overhead. So if it's directly overhead, it's not coming from sides, right? So the shadow isn't off to a side of the tree it's gonna come straight overhead. So we're gonna imagine this is a big circle of tree and we're just gonna put a shadow around it. And it's gonna get pretty dark right up next to the tree. We can even go over the tree a little bit because there, yeah, I can almost have a darker blue. I should find like a, what else? 
else do we have in here? These blues are kind of wimpy. What's this? Blue green. I wonder if blue green might be darker. Not much. A little bit. Okay, so we got a shadow here. There's no shadow really from that. This one's gonna have a shadow here. Try not to color on the table. But you guys all know that I don't care if, if artwork gets on the table, right? So I've always said that. Now, these guys have to have it. Look at that. We got shadow around the base of the tree. And these guys have probably something that we can't really see too much. Now I'm gonna do a little bit more back here because we've lost those valleys. We'll put these valleys in. All right, now look what we've got. We have foreground, middle ground, this area back here, and then background. Now, I can still do more and do some cool things. Um, I just have to get a little darker on these trees back here. They're just not showing up very much. And I want this water to be really nice and watery looking there. Okay, so there we go. And I bet you could do even better. But this is a quick lesson now, here's another one I was working on earlier, similar. You can see the same idea. And we have the shadows of directly overhead. And it goes back. So that's, that's really fun. Now, I wish I could talk to you. And we will be working on getting videos or uh, time slots and um, how we can coordinate so that we can have um, maybe interactive classes. But... For next time, I have a little assignment for you. Draw and color a picture of what the dentist sees when they're cleaning your teeth. So what do you think you look like in that dentist chair when the dentist is, sees your mouth and, and sees you laying in, in the dentist chair? And what do you look like if you have a cavity or getting a filling? So I want you to keep that in mind and do a, a funny picture, I'm sure it'll be funny, and draw it and color it, and I would love to see some examples. And your parents can share those with me um, until we can figure out how to interact. Okay, and let me double check. I wanna make sure that I didn't miss something. Oh, I do wanna say that we, one thing about this middle ground, foreground, and background, we do not have to draw a landscape to, to, to do that. So maybe we have a line here, and maybe we have um, here is a cup of coffee, right? The handle, here's your cup of coffee. And then maybe you have, um, in our house, we have these really bright, round, salt and pepper shakers and they could be over here okay and um maybe maybe you have um a plate right here or maybe it's a bowl of cereal how about if we do that so you get some cereal pieces, I don't know, and they're floating in your milk, right? So you got that in here. And maybe, maybe way back here, off the table, but further over, you can see your windows in the back. So now look what we've done. We've done foreground, middle ground, and background. So that is just what we learned from foreground, middle ground, and background is that there is depth. So you don't draw everything all in a line and all the same size. Okay? That should be that should be easily understood. Now, this is some type of weird purple coffee. And I don't know what that drink's gonna be. It could be grape juice in a coffee cup. All right, and one other, let's see, one other thing is 
on our drawing here, you could add, easily add, um, a, a silo. I don't even know if they make red silos anymore. And maybe a barn. And just draw it out here. That's way out there, okay? So you can add things other than trees. You can add a road. What if you add a road? Now the road is gonna come from over here and as it gets further away, it's gonna get smaller because it's going away from you. As things do, they get smaller. There, so you can do all kinds of things to add to that. Now I think I have gone over everything. So, time to go. See you next time.